What's up, guys? Welcome to VHV Engines. Alright, um, today we're gonna do piston pressing. Uh, you see here, and I've already got it set up, about ready to go, because it takes a while to set it up, which is part of the reason why I fucking hate doing this. Um, so, to skip that part, I'm just gonna show you real quick uh, here by hand what I'm doing. <clears throat> see, uh, Honda engines have that fucking retarded design when it comes to the pistons. Um, this is a lot easier for some of those V8s and shit I've seen where this ridge right here doesn't exist. So all you gotta do is like shove two plates of metal up in there, there's two blocks, and it's easy as fuck to press it out. But um, if I just put something right here to press, uh, then chances are I'm gonna shatter the piston. And if I just put it flat on the press, or if I just put it flat on the plate, on the ringland grooves it's gonna smash the ringland grooves and dent the piston um so the only way i've been able to do this shit um and i haven't really seen anybody on youtube doing honda pistons with the press i mean i've seen a lot of do-it-yourself guys with all kinds of different crazy tools they made but uh this is the most straightforward way i've seen it and like i said already it's pain in the ass i hate doing this shit anyway so what you gotta do is you gotta get something that you can sit here in the grooves. Now, of course, it's fucking retarded groove, so it's not going to sit in there even unless you fabricate something. And I do plan on doing something in the future, but not right now. So what I used to do was two fat-ass fucking bolts, and I'd put them right here, uh, and it would make a little bit of indention right here, but I, nothing that wouldn't be a problem. I uh, always smooth it out, and it's fine. Uh, and so anyway, I put two bolts here, and then... Then you need something that you can lie flush in with here. What I use is a socket and an extension and drop it in there. And of course you just press it on through. Now what I've done this time though to help compared to what times before I used to kind of like hold it by hand and, just, and get it set up and it would take forever. And it would always bounce around and jiggle and drop a couple of times before I get it. But this time I um, used a block of wood to kind of balance the piston up a little bit so I don't have to worry about it. And as soon as you start putting pressure here on the pin, it's going to fucking pop up. This is just a kickstand until you can get it locked in place. Um, so I, I didn't bring my bolts with me from Florida. I brought a, I didn't, so I, what I did was just, I grabbed some piston wrist pins from some other pistons. Oh, and did it like that. So, I mean, you can see how I'll set up. And even then, they're always, they're not exactly perfect just because of the way the indentions are on the piston. Anyway, so, I forgot to mention real quick, too. I lost a couple pistons when I first started pressing. Um, see where that little embossing shit is, that ridge right, right around where the pin is? You can't put anything there. If you put something there, it's too small and narrow. It won't hold the weight of the press, and it'll shatter the piston right there. And uh, these B18 pistons are still good. I don't want to fuck them up, uh, so I'm trying to keep them safe in between the transfer here. Alright, so I uh, guess I'm just going to get to it. Now this is already locked, you know, locked, not super tight locked in place, but it's in there, so it should just, I should be able to just push through it. Alright, now, you're going to, it's going to get tense, and this is not something that's easy. These, these press fit pins aren't like floating wrist pins where you can just knock them out. You know, they have to be pushed with a lot of fucking force. So um, uh, you're gonna see it's gonna get tight, it's gonna get tight, it's gonna get tight, and then you're gonna hear it pop. And that pop hopefully isn't the piston breaking, it's the uh, wrist, pin, wrist, wrist pin breaking free of its hold in the middle. See, there goes the board. Oh, shit. Maybe I did lose it. Ah, oh, I fucking hope not. 
Let's see. Let's see if we lost the piston. Oh, we're good. Woo! Nerve-wracking. And guess what's even more nerve-wracking? When I have to press the good ones on, the ones I don't want to lose, <laughs> the B16s. So this is this is a shitty process, man. Like I gotta press the B18s off of the B18 rods. I gotta press the B16s off the B16 rods, and then I have to press the B16s back on to these rods. It sucks, man. It's a very nerve-wracking process. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I generally think that, uh, that, or at least from what I've heard from people, that, uh, machine shops charge about $10 a piston, like, if you want to press. So, I think that, if, especially if you're doing this, like, a one-time thing, it is definitely, it is definitely worth the price to take it to somebody and spend 40 bucks and have them guaranteed do it without any damage, you know? Um... Because uh, the Harbor Freight, this this press right here cost me like 80 bucks. So, 80 bucks if you're not going to like use it again. I definitely think it's worth spending the money on this. So this is one of those few times where I want to say, take it to the machine shops, folks, if you can. It's not it's uh, not a bad idea to do so. All right, so real quick, I'm going to show you what's going on here. What I was talking about. You see it? See that little right there? See, it's like a little bit of mushroom, a little flattened. That's from where the uh, the wristband was sitting. You can see them on that side too. Those little pressure spots. Now it's not enough. Uh, it's not gonna fuck up the shit or anything. I've done this a couple times before, where I've had uh, like bad B18 rods. I was doing a B18 stock rebuild. Had to chuck a rod out. Actually, I have like a, a decent amount of fucked up rods in my stash right now. I didn't even realize. Thought I had a lot more pistons and rods than I do, but it seems like I actually have a lot of pistons and not so much rods. Um, oh, honestly, uh, here's another thing too, guys. It got all blurry. Sorry about that. Um, if you are, uh, if you are gonna fucking do this, you're gonna press pistons. See, this is dirty as fuck, but I'm doing this just for expedience sake here. I'm just trying to show you guys real quick because it's already kind of late, and uh, I still got one more thing to do. Uh, but anyway. I would say that if you're going to clean them yourself at home, then definitely leave the piston, leave the rod attached first. So that way, if you're going to do like, see that green tub over there that I have, it's full of purple power, my little wash tank I have. So that way, you can hold on to the base of the rod and just dunk it. And you don't have to put your whole hand in the fucking cleaner. Uh, gloves or not, you know, you still you want to, don't want to do that. Uh, so yeah, definitely leave the rod on. I just want to show it first. I'm not going to walk through all four of them because, like I said, it's a, it's a big fucking setup. And I don't think I'm actually going to put the new pistons on tonight. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to press them off the B18 rods, set the rods aside. And um, I'm going to clean the pistons. I'll probably come out here and do that shit tomorrow. I'll clean up the pistons and then press them over so that way we can prep ready to go. Uh, so this B18 block, uh, I'm, what I'm going to do next here is I'm going to fucking put the crank in. And that's going to be it for tonight because, like I said, i got to clean the pistons and all that shit. But the good thing is, is that's really, you know, we're really close. I mean, I... Ah, all right, I'm, I'm just not going to drag, drag on here. We'll talk about it in the next video. Uh, guys, there's some piston, piston pressing for you. Um, I didn't show you how to put them on, but it's the same thing, just in reverse. <laughs> uh, if you actually go to my other video, and I'll leave a link in the cards here... Um, up here but if you uh if you go to my other video you can see the same steps you used for those floating the floating wrist pins you put it on you nub it in there a little bit but uh you know once you get it in socket in a place then you put it back on the press and get to it again from there um i might even make a follow-up video tomorrow uh, i don't know we'll see all right guys uh thanks for watching and peace